Hi, um, this uh, little tutorial looks at um, how to create a, a helix um, in the massing environment. Um, following uh, two sort of articles that had appeared um, on uh, the BIM Troublemaker blog and also Zach Crone's Builds blog, um, I wondered if it was possible to create a helix um, within the massing environment without um, needing to go he too heavy on maths. Um, maths never been uh, a strong point. So I just wondered if it was possible just to uh, nest various different components and that opened up some um, interesting challenges. So if we just look on, on the screen here we've got something that uh, I'm going to quickly show you how to try and attempt to put that together. I'm not going to be able to give you all the answers in this in this tutorial but we'll just give you like a short version of it. So what I actually started with um, was um, a circle um, in the massing environment. So you see here the reference line um, which is driven by a radius and you'll notice here it's got a couple of points and then there's a, uh, a line drawn between these two points. Uh, the points that are actually hosted onto the circle again sort of raises another is issue uh, which I highlighted in a previous article um, how to control points on on circles. Pretty easy to control them on a line because you've either got 0 or 1 or 0.5 is, is, uh, allows a uh, point to be placed halfway along a line. Um, it's different with circles because uh, it re relies on the formula of 2 pi. So if we um, if we have a look at the, uh, the types over here, uh, let's save that a second, um, and just come in here and I'm going to try and step you through some of these formulas. Um, we've got two points on, on the actual circle itself. You can see here is P1 and P2 um, and to get the values what we're doing is having to position um, them opposite to each other. So obviously we have a, the radius that's driven here, um, but the, the main focus really is controlling the subdivisions. So as I said, to, to, to calculate the subdivisions based on radiance um, of these points on the circle, you need to take 3.141593, multiply it by 2, and divide it by 360 degrees, which obviously gives you a 1 degree radian for, for each point um, as it goes around the circle. So then what I do is a little bit of calculation. Um, what we've got a, a value here which is our T value, so that's a degree, so we can cross-reference it here, degrees multiplied by the subdivisions, okay, and that will give us our first T value. So we place that first T value there, uh, and then what we say is P1 plus 1 times pi. Okay, so that gives us the opposite position. So what I've done here is I've set up some types and you can sort of see this in action. So if we say 45 degrees, we've got an angle of 45 degrees there. Okay, so 45 degrees multiplied by the subdivisions, which is this value here, gives us this T value. We pop that T value in there and then to get the opposite value, it's P1 plus, as I said, 1 times pi. Okay, so we can get that to go all the way around the circle and as I apply that you'll see uh, the line uh, move its way around the circle. 